We are living in a misinformation crisis. In an age where everyone with a social media account is a publisher, reading headlines has replaced reading articles. We take what we read at surface level, citing them in our conversations, sharing them on social media, and using them to inform our decisions. This trend is dangerous and unacceptable. Whether it's science, health, or politics, it's more important than ever that we have the courage to stand up to people and opinions that are dishonest. It's for this reason I was intrigued by a blog post I read by Alexei Guzzi, titled Matthew Walker's Why We Sleep is Riddled with Scientific and Factual Errors. Alexei's blog is a culmination of 130 hours and over two months of research, investigating and debunking several scientific claims in the book. I personally heard about the book from a friend during a road trip. What stood out to me in that conversation was this sort of urgency of uh, requiring eight hours of sleep every night or facing some negative consequences. That is until I read Alexi's blog. So let's get into some of these claims. In chapter one, Walker writes that the shorter your sleep, the shorter your lifespan. There were no citations for this claim, but Alexi decided to dig up some research on sleep time and mortality by himself, and he found a different answer. In a meta-analysis of 35 different studies, one paper found that, in fact, mortality followed a U-shaped curve, with both higher and lower sleep having higher mortality than the lowest point at just under seven hours of sleep. Additionally, the Encyclopedia of Sleep says that the popular expectation that short sleep is correlated with short lifespan and long sleep with greater longevity is not supported by the existing literature. So if we assume that good intent, you know, this could pass as uh, oversimplification, but unfortunately it does get worse. Walker goes on to claim routinely sleeping less than six or seven hours a night demolishes your immune system more than doubling your risk of cancer. Naturally, this is a very scary and serious reason to be sleeping more than six or seven hours. But again, these claims appear to be unsupported. Walker doesn't provide any citations, and Alexi finds that in a systematic review of 65 studies, which involved 1.5 million participants, neither short or long sleep was associated with increased cancer risk. So in short, there is actually no evidence that shorter sleep leads to shorter lifespan or increased risk of cancer. Claim two, there are no benefits to getting less sleep. On page eight, Walker writes, we are now forced to wonder whether there are any biological functions that do not benefit from a good night's sleep. So far, the results of thousands of studies insist that no, there aren't. According to Alexi, this is also a lie. He points out that there's a lot of research that sleep deprivation therapy can actually help people with depression, specifically by limiting the amount of sleep they have. Walker himself actually acknowledges this therapy later in chapter seven, but suggests it's not very helpful by saying, approximately 30 to 40% of the patients will feel better after a night without sleep. The 60 to 70% of patients who do not respond to sleep deprivation will actually feel worse. Again, Alexi finds literature that conflicts with Walker's claim. Specifically, in one study, it showed that total sleep deprivation for one whole night improves depressive symptoms in 40 to 60% of treatments. The degree of clinical change spans a continuum from complete remission to worsening in 2 to 7%. Quite a bit off from the 60 to 70% that Walker claimed. So, in summary, while a majority of people will likely not benefit with less sleep, there are some that can likely benefit a lot from short term sleep deprivation. So, I think it's worth pointing out that for majority of the people, uh, getting less sleep isn't actually good for them. But I don't think that's your point here. So, do you want to clarify, like, why did you bring this up as a as a claim? Right. Sure. I I, I completely agree. I think uh, the the majority of people should probably not intentionally decrease the amount of sleep they ha they get. However, it's really important because it's like scares people out of trying a treatment that is actually really safe and that actually might be really helpful for them. The, the thing that I find the most alarming, I think, is throughout the book, he just consistently exaggerates the dangers of lack of sleep over and over and over. And in the case of sleep deprivation therapy, the real danger is very low. Claim number three, we are in a sleep loss epidemic. On page four, Walker writes, the World Health Organization has now declared a sleep loss epidemic throughout industrialized nations. And he cites the following documentary, Sleepless in America, made by National Geographic. Now again, this seems like the kind of claim that is reasonable enough and wouldn't require any digging into, but in the noble pursuit of scientific integrity and maybe just having too much time on his hands, Alexei actually watched the entire one and a half hour film twice 
and didn't find a single mention of the World Health Organization. To be fair, Walker did later acknowledge in a podcast that this was a misattribution. The attribution of that should not be to the World Health Organization, and so that misattribution needs to be corrected. But let's actually look at the claim. Is it true that people are sleeping less than they have before? Walker backs this up with a figure suggesting that the average amount of sleep has decreased from nine to seven hours in the last 60 years. But again, he doesn't cite any studies that backs this up. When Alexei looked into it, he found strong evidence that we aren't actually sleeping less, but we might actually be sleeping more. In one study from 2013, the authors wrote, long sleep duration is more widespread than is short sleep duration. It has become more prevalent and thus should not be overlooked as a potential contributor to ill health. I decided to do some browsing on Google Scholar myself and found an additional study in 2017 and concluding that the results are consistent with recent reviews of subjective data which have challenged the notion of a modern epidemic of insufficient sleep. That said, there have also been studies in more specific groups such as teenagers in the last 10 to 20 years that do show a decline in sleep. They attribute these to the rise in smartphones and social media. But on the whole, if we're talking about the world and industrialized nations, it doesn't appear that we are in a sleep loss epidemic. Claim number four, two thirds of adults throughout all developed nations fail to obtain the recommended eight hours of nightly sleep. So how did he get these numbers? Let's break it down. The National Sleep Foundation recommends seven to nine hours of sleep for adults. Walker turns this into an average of eight hours of sleep. And from this concludes that eight hours is the recommended amount of sleep. Do you see the problem here? Walker incorrectly casts anything from seven to eight hours of sleep as not getting the recommended amount of sleep, even though that falls perfectly within this National Sleep Foundation's guidelines. In reality, if we're looking at the number of people who are getting less than the seven hours of sleep that is under the recommendation, it's closer to one third, not two thirds. All right, so I think we've covered the big points that you made in your essay. Um, and some people might say that this is nitpicky and that the inaccuracies in this book aren't that bad because sleep is so important. So what would you say to those people? The first thing that I would say is that fear mongering is actually really important and it's a really bad thing to do, I think. Uh, first of all, because it actually induces anxiety in people about sleep. Like, I, I could have never predicted the number of people who would write to me as a result of me publishing this essay. Basically, the, the identical emails where they're like, everything was great, I was sleeping like six or seven or eight hours a night. Then I read the book, I became really anxious about sleep. And I was like, whenever I slept less than eight hours, I was like, my immune function just uh, went to hell. My cancer risk increased a ton. So like whenever I slept less than eight hours, I just forced myself to sleep more and I became more anxious and this made sleeping more difficult and it just gen increased the general level of anxiety and I developed insomnia. And then they like uh, either read my, my essay and they were like, oh, actually things are not as bad as worker claims. And they just like return to sleeping well the number of hours that they just naturally slept or they went to like a, a, a psychiatrist and, and they were helped, but they were like really concretely harmed by the book in a pretty big way. So I think one takeaway from this video is that there's still a lot we do not know about the science of sleep and to take the claims in this book with a healthy skepticism. That said, there's no doubt that getting sleep is important as long as you remember that the amount that you should get will likely vary a lot from person to person and even day by day. However, I think the most important takeaway from this video is not about sleep at all. Rather, I hope this video inspires you to not just take facts at the surface level and to have that curiosity to seek the truth and the courage to stand up for it. Thank you so much for watching. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and definitely go check out Alexi's blog. He writes about a ton of interesting topics, including life sciences, psychology, personal development. And if you want to see more videos, consider subscribing because I'm going to be making a bunch more videos and I'd love to have you on this journey. All right, I'll see you next time. That said, there is no doubt that sleep is important. Hey, I'm, I'm finishing up a, a filming a video. Can I call you back in like five minutes?